Somewhere back here in the jungle are the remains of the cable communication station, which transformed the tiny fishing village of Sumai into a major link in worldwide communications. Cameraman Ray Rabara and I decided to see what we could find. It was March 1903. Sumai was a small, isolated fishing village. Little English was spoken here. Fresh water had to be carted in by bull cart. There were no roads between Aganya and Sumai, and certainly no telephones. But in that year, suddenly Sumai Guam became a major link in world communications. It began with the vision of a Nevada silver mine millionaire, John McKay, to create worldwide communication via undersea cable. Crews from the newly formed Commercial Pacific Cable Company fanned across the Pacific to islands to build the initial stations to receive the cables. There were nine Americans and four Chinese who initially were sent here to prepare the area for the landing of the cable down at Sumai. One of the things they had to do was dig a trench from the shoreline up this slight rise to what would become the cable communication station receiving area. They fought mosquitoes, they fought humidity, they didn't have very good accommodations, and they didn't have very much water. Simultaneously, two of the world's largest cable steamers were laying cable on the ocean floor toward Guam, both from Manila and from Honolulu. And on the 4th of July, 1903, the first round-the-world message was transmitted by President Theodore Roosevelt. It took nine minutes to circle the globe, and in those nine minutes, Guam had its first worldwide telegraphic exposure. By early 1905, the permanent cable station stood as a self-contained complex of numerous buildings with a water reservoir and distribution system, sewer system, cold storage and ice plant, all illuminated by acetylene gas manufactured on the premises. Soon more cables were laid to Yap and China and Japan, and in 1906, the first island telephone line was installed to the Naval Governor Headquarters on the Aganya Plaza de España. And 30 years later, in 1936, the first outside telephone contact was made on a ham radio. By the 1930s, as many as 24 Chamorros worked at the cable station, employment contributing to the prosperity of the one-time fishing village now with 2,000 residents. Then, World War II. The war caused most of the Pacific services to be abandoned and Guam Station to be severely damaged. It was briefly revived after the war, but finally service was shut down in 1951. These ruins are a symbol of how Guam has become, in 106 years, the center of worldwide fiber optic cable communications. More naval base history next time. Yeah.